Hey, major, major, major spoilers for the entirety of Final Fantasy XIV uh, based on the music alone and some video clips, so watch at your own peril. I've been thinking about Masayoshi Soken a lot in my day to day. And no, not in a weird way. <laughs> No, I'm thinking about Soken because light motifs. Now, wait, before I dive too deep, Marco, what's the difference between motifs and light motifs? Merriam Webster defines the difference between motifs and light motifs as a motif refers to a recurring thematic element. These can occur in things like fabric, a recurring pattern of design. Motifs can happen in science too, like uh, in gene sequencing, a recurring pattern. But more broadly, motifs simply mean a theme. On the flip side, a light motif originates specifically from opera a recurring melody that plays along with a character or the suggestion of a character. When someone thinks of a character or that character arrives on stage, usually a leitmotif is played. This, of course, derives from the German words leading, light, and motive, motif. Of course, we know that Richard Wagner was the person who really jump-started the concept of leitmotifs, especially in his ring cycle. Listen to the Valhalla leitmotif. Every time Valhalla is mentioned, this leitmotif plays. Valhalla symbolizes the home of the gods, the home that they are desperate to get back to. We also often hear this when we're talking about a composer like Giacomo Puccini. Puccini was heavily influenced by Wagner, and it makes sense that leitmotifs would play into his work. Leitmotifs and motifs, at this point basically being interchangeable, are all over Puccini operas, and Puccini has references to characters musically all of the time basically in every second of his works. Take, for instance, this example from Act One of La Boheme. And then hear it again in Act 4 of La Boheme, a very different circumstance. Same music, very different context. I won't spoil it too much for you as La Boheme is an opera worth experiencing on your own for the first time, so I'm gonna avoid spoilers for a 126 year old opera here. Anyway, back to Soken. Listen to this. or this.
or this. What about this? You get my point. This repetition of these themes becomes ingrained in us. It becomes something that every time we hear it, we can't help but say, hey, wait, I know this. That builds the emotional impact and ultimately is used for us as players to become emotionally invested, not only in the music, but also the plot. Because by now we understand that music and plot are synonymous in their importance. They are intertwined. They are essential for us as players to be invested. A prime example of this is hearing the main theme of Shadowbringers and then hearing it upon fighting one of the game's more important bosses in a remixed and modified version. It's a visceral reinterpretation that leaves us feeling like we're fighting for our lives. Of course, this also reminds me of a song like Flow. The song is teased to us so many times in Endwalker, in poignant cutscenes like this. In cities like Radzad Han, we hear this. And one of my personal favorites, Old Charlie and a Knight. Each time we hear this, we get more and more attached to the motive, or in this case, leitmotif, because it actually does represent Heidel in a character. So when we finally hear the full version in game, it leaves us kind of gut-punched, stunned, and in a lot of cases, for most of us, sobbing. It's this culmination of all of this sustained musical conditioning and teasing that when we finally get the full payout, it's incredibly satisfying. Oh, 
On the flip side, when we get to the final battle against Xenos, and we have footfalls in its entirety, I still get goosebumps. Much in the same way when we get Who Brings Shadow in our fight with Hades and M itself. These musical moments are insanely satisfying because we've heard Shadowbringers and Footfalls not only from the very beginning of the game, but throughout both expansions, from the damn main menu. It's electric seeing these sequences in game. It moves us, shakes us, and we feel this incredible feeling of satisfaction, having arrived at a sort of climax and culmination that has been teased for literally hours. It's funny because something like this also occurs in Ariadne of Noxos. Ariadne sings of her loneliness, of her inevitable wait for death, when suddenly, she hears the voice of Bacchus in the distance, Bacchus being her savior and love come to life. The nymphs around her, her friends, sing the most stunning trio. Honestly, it's one of the most beautiful things I've heard in my entire life, and I cry most of the time when I hear it. Here, take a listen. This alone is astounding, right? Musically beautiful and stunning. Just a quick little trio, no big deal. And now it's in our brains, it's implanted in there, right? But now fast forward to the end of the opera. Did you hear the shift? Do you hear how hearing that theme earlier doubles the emotional impact and context of the piece because we've already heard it? This is such a genius move by composers because it leaves us feeling vulnerable, emotionally open to receive, and more importantly, connected to the piece even more deeply than before. So my question is, what's your favorite leitmotif from Final Fantasy XIV? As a professional musician who has spent a ton of time in music, this really excited me when I first heard the music of Final Fantasy XIV. I love callbacks, references, connections, and ways to deepen audience perception and souls to music, to story. Music is definitely one of the greatest ways to do it. Thank you, Soken, for using this incredibly simple gesture that really has been around for hundreds of years, impacting audiences, whether they're on the stage or through a medium like video games. It's awesome. Thanks a ton, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.